Augustine for three. He thrills it. <laughs> DJ Augustine. What's up, everybody? It's DJ Augustine here. I'm with my co-host, Mackenzie, and we have a special guest today. Um, you may know him as a superstar, NBA player, you know, but I know him as, a, as more like a brother, a good friend of mine, and he was uh, able to help us out today and be on the show. So we have a special guest, Kevin Durant, here with us, and uh, we're going to get into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, KD, we want to start off with how you – came into the game, like coming from Maryland, what got you started playing basketball? Was it just something you just felt like you just was born to play or you just fell in love with the game? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's probably a typical story, just wanting to, you know, something to do after school, you know what I mean? My mom wanted me to get out the house, so she enrolled me into, uh, she got, got me a rec car at this uh, center down the street from the house. And when I first walked into the gym, I just, fell in love. I just wanted to go back. So each day I just got more and more excited about the game. So with the, the recreation center, like was it somewhere that you you just show your card and just show up and you just play for unlimited time yeah. or was it Yeah, it was more so like a you know, uh after school program. Yeah. We had so many activities from arts and crafts to field trips, but obviously the basketball court was the, the one that took my attention. So um, you know, we, it, we only had a few hours a day, you know, we got out of school at about three. I was there at like four o'clock, four to five, four to six. And I was, you know, and each, each, you know, every couple of months, I just was there longer and longer. And I just built up that love over time. Was it anybody there that kind of not pushed you, but kind of helped you, uh, hone in on your skills or kind of yeah. help you develop? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a, you know, see, back then in the community center, it was it was a real community, you know. I think the the directors of the community center really took care of the kids. They treated us like family, like their, like their own kids. So no matter what they, as soon as I walked into the gym, every kid, they wanted to teach them how to play. And I was the one that always came back more than my friends. So, you know, it was – Constant learning and constant teaching in that recreational center, just not just about basketball, but life in general, school, everything. But you know, like I said, I just gravitated towards the game. And so, did you? Um, you went to Montrose, right? Mm -hmm. So, was Montrose before or after Oak Hill? Was it? it was Montrose was after Oak Hill. I went to four different high schools. So my first my s freshman year, I went to the local high school, and you know, then I transferred halfway through the year, and then I ended up at uh, Oak Hill my junior year, um, and then my senior year I went to Montrose Christian. Okay, I, on the way over here I found out we have another uh, Oak Hill. I went to Oak Hill. Yeah, what? Yeah, so when <laughs> I like, so I know that you obviously went to Oak Hill. I was like, I have to ask him because it's the fact you don't come across people who went yeah, to Oak Hill in mouth of Wilson, <laughs> Virginia, where there's nothing around absolutely it. Absolutely nothing. There's absolutely nothing except our little like wow. bookstore, like food store that you go to after class for yeah, like an hour, crazy. and then you get sent to your dorm. They have practice. Yo, and like the men, crazy. the boys and the girls are like separated that's on opposite crazy. sides. Yeah, you bring it back. The memories. campus. I never met anyone that went to Oak Hill outside of that that uh, didn't play basketball. Like everybody I see has always been basketball players since yeah. I left Oak Hill. It's crazy to see that. Yeah, thing. I went there for a year. So I was there. My junior year was Brandon Jennings' senior year. So that's oh, when. So he's younger than us, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was what, 09, 08? It, it was like the 07, 08, yeah. Yeah, that was their 05. Yeah, that was a crazy time. Oak Hill is uh, very isolated, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was literally in the middle of the woods, <laughs> nothing else yeah. around. Like, a near, what the nearest gas station was, what, about 30, 40 minutes away? Yeah, like nothing. Like literally nothing. So it was just all hoops. I think once I went there, I really took off as a player. What was it like playing for that, that team? I know you guys had. Steve Smith. Yeah. yeah. Ty Lawson. You yeah. had so many future yeah, NBA players. Yeah. What was it like playing? I mean, coming guys? from home, coming from D.C. and not playing on the national stage like that and then going to Oak Hill. And we had a national schedule. We played out in Portland for a Christmas tournament. We played here in New York for a tournament, which aired on ESPN. That was the first time people kind of seen me play. So if it wasn't for that experience, I don't know you know, where I'd be at this point because, you know, having millions of people watch you for a game and you play well, that, that takes your stock up. So, Oak Hill was a huge stop in my career. And, 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 like, I know we played in a McDonald's game. Like, what was that feeling like getting invited to that game? Because I know for me that was like 
I mean, after the, like before you go to the NBA, the McDonald's is like the first thing you want to accomplish. So like, yeah. what was that like for you getting invited to that game? It was sweet. You know, we since I was probably about eleven years old, I was watching those games and wanted to be a part of it. And then to get your name called and, you know, the excitement around it, you know how that feels. And then once you committed to Texas and I knew you was going in the game, it made me even more excited that we was going to get a head start on our relationship too. Mm. Um, so it was it, you know, it was one of those moments that I always think about and it, it feels like it yesterday when it happened. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, it, that's funny you brought that up because, um, you know, people ask me all the time, they, they you know, if I do interviews and stuff, they might ask me something about you, right? Mm. And so they asked me, what's, what's one thing about Katie, you know, blase, blase? And I'd be like, man, first time we met and we went on campus, our first day on campus at UT, before we made our beds and our dorms, <laughs> he was like, let's go to the gym yeah. and work out. Yeah. Like, and he's been that same way from day one. So what was that experience like walking on the University of Texas campus for the first time? Being away from your family, yeah. your mom, your brother, everybody, yeah. and basically, being a man, you know. Man, it was a culture shock because the day before I got there, I had graduated from high school. So, like, literally the next day I was on a plane by myself to go to Texas for the whole year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So everything happened kind of fast. And, you know, that's back then where now I see a lot of kids coming to college, their whole family moved yeah, down to the sure. city. My mom was, she left <laughs> me, she, she, I had to catch a cab to the airport, and she, but she made sure I was there. But... It was just such a, a culture shock coming from having graduating with like 13 kids mm -hmm. in my senior class to having 50,000 students and seeing a new person every day. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was it was it was different. But I had y'all, and we always right. stuck together. And like that form, that, that bond we formed it from day one yeah. is it, something that like has never be broken. You know what yeah. I mean? It was it was it was uh, special. Yeah, I mean I don't think people realize like a college campus for like. Kids coming straight out of high school is very intimidating. Like yes. at UT, it was like <laughs> it's time. I 10. can only imagine. Yeah, I mean, we had to catch buses to get to classes. Yeah. That's how big the campus was. So, I mean, it was like a and it's on top of that. It's a football school, so we right. had to really like earn our way into people's sure. hearts. There, you For know sure. what I'm saying? Like we, it wasn't we wasn't expecting packed crowds at our games or people to know us in class or like we was we came in with a nice humble approach. Yeah, and I like sure. that too. Yeah, that's definitely dope. Because yeah. like you said, UT is like Texas in general. Yeah. All they care about is football, football for the most yeah. part. Yeah. So yeah. to be able to do that. And I think also come like, coming in with a humble approach is. Yeah. 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 And I mean, people didn't expect much from us. Um, you know, a lot of us was highly ranked coming out of high school. But mm -hmm. uh, I think we had a pretty good freshman year. You know, we, we started young. we started four freshmen we and young. one sophomore. And uh we went. We lost in the, what, the first round of the. I know the second round of second the. Second round. round. But we had, we. But just that whole season, we were always like trending up. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we were the youngest team in the, in the country. It felt like like that was the first time like the one and done rule had just came yeah. in. So like majority of the guys in our class had to go to college, and like we had so many freshmen that year that were doing well. But our team just kept growing, and we ended up like top 15. I yeah, think. for sure. So what was that like for you, like on an individual level, um, doing the things you did your freshman year? Like, like you said, you didn't know what to expect coming yeah, into that. You right. didn't know, you know. I know Coach Barnes; he didn't guarantee us anything as far yeah. as playing time. For the things you did as a freshman in college at UT on that level, when you look back, what do you feel like? I didn't. I didn't imagine doing none of that. Yeah. I didn't come into the. You know me. I was just. Yeah. I was just seeing what was gonna happen. So. Like to come in and average that many points, and you know get awards and have so many people you know know what Texas basketball is about. Like mm -hmm. it happened too fast. You know what I'm saying? It felt like I didn't really get to enjoy college because it was just like I felt like a superstar early right, on. You right. know what I mean? But I had a lot of fun, and it was one of those things where I needed that experience to help me get to where I am as a player today. You know what I'm saying? With y without y'all, like y'all put me in position every game to be successful. Like, and without having a young team around me that were growing at the same time, I don't think, you know, I had that success. Any other school, I don't think I'd have had that success. Mm -hmm. Texas was the perfect spot and the only spot I could do that at. And that's one thing, that's like, he's so humble, like, <laughs> you know, it, and I remember, I'll give you another story about KD um, to talk about how humble he is. Um, 
he was playing amazing, breaking records, leading the country in scoring. And it wasn't, what magazine was it? Uh, uh, Slam? It was or? like Dime Magazine. It Dime it's not magazine. even around so right now. <laughs> they, wanted, they wanted KD to be on the cover. But KD was like, I'm not doing the cover unless my teammates are on it with me. Yeah, and, that was, yeah. And they ended up putting all of us on the cover of the magazine. I got that cover the back there five. somewhere. Yeah, I'll show y'all after we done. But. Yeah, but I, I just, like, to this day, like, he's been the same way. You know, he's never been the type of player to take credit for everything, you know, even though he's the best player. Um, he's always given his teammates credit and, and made us a part, you know, no matter what team he was with in college, NBA, high school. So, you know, that's one thing I always loved about him, just, you know, his humble approach. I remember, <laughs> I remember, I remember, uh, Coach Barnes was tough on us, like, oh, especially was, you and I. Like, yeah, for sure. I remember I was on a bus and uh, we were going down to Baylor, and I was playing bad. I had a blast stretch. We had lost to like Villanova, but mm -hmm. you had, you were like cooking. Like you was playing <laughs> well this time. You had reached your peak. I remember he pulled me to the front seat. Was like, yeah, you know, they talk about you going first round. You see that guy back there <laughs> talk about DJ? DJ, he's like, you need to start playing with that toughness. <laughs> And after he told me that, we started watching film a little bit more, and he started locking in with me more. And then I started paying attention to DJ, and I'm like, his focus and detail to just about everything in his life is the reason why we so tight, and I grew, and I, he's such a leader, and it's the reason why he still has a long career in the NBA. So like, and at that age, kids don't do that. And I wasn't doing it. Like I wasn't that focused. I like being in the gym, yeah. and I like messing around in the gym, but. To have that structure and everything that DJ did was like the focus that he had. We all took from that, even though we ain't said everybody wanted to follow me because I was popular, but we followed DJ that year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, that was, like I said, that was a huge part of my journey. Yeah. I, just because you brought up his humble nature, where do you uh -huh. think that stems from for you personally? I mean, the truth of the matter is, I, I, I play a team sport. I mean, we play a team sport. I'm a huge part of it, and I score a lot of points. And I'm, I'm not, <laughs> not, not going to shy away from what I do because that's just what we do. But, yeah. I mean, without the other parts and working it together, I couldn't have any success as a basketball player. I mean, that's just the nature. I mean, I might – I've been blessed with length and height, and, you know, I have so much support and so many teachers to help me with this game. So it's not just myself. You know, I wasn't out here by myself doing anything. So – Get credit where it's due, but I know when I had some great games as well. Though. <laughs> yeah, and his and his mom is great. Like she, she, you know, she raised him well. You know, Miss Wanda, she, you know, I've been around her a lot. She doesn't play games, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes and, and, and it shows through him, you know, and the kind of person he is today. But you know, like he said, when we was at Texas, like it was just like a, a shock to all of us, but we had each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how we formed like a brotherhood. You know, me, Katie, Matt Hill. Who coaches with Atlanta now? He was in Orlando too. Yeah, I mean, a couple years back. Us. Yeah, um, uh, and I could go on. We just had this tight brotherhood, and we went through everything together, and we had each other, you know. And um, you know that was special. Man, special I still, times. man, I still think about those days. Yeah. yeah. Though you've had such an epic and successful career this far, do you ever wish you could have just stayed in college a little bit longer? Yes, especially that next year because they had went to the Elite Eight, and I'm just like, I'm watching that run. I'm it was just time like, for him to go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew it was time for me to go, obviously, but I'm like, I, I love playing with them so yeah. much and being around campus and coaching, just the whole atmosphere. I was just like, you know, glued to the TV that next year and, mm -hmm. and wishing I was a part of that group because we had a good chance if mm -hmm. I was still on that team and like to make it to the Elite Eight. And to see them always ma almost make it to the final four, that was special. Yeah. I mean, it's tough, you know. You um like like we've been talking about, you build this bond, but at the same time, you gotta make the best decision for yourself. Yeah. And, um, you know, and at the time it was just best for him to, you know, he 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 accomplished everything in college. And then um, DJ came right afterwards. He took it he, that next year he was out of there too. So it was, Yeah, I couldn't I mean <laughs> I, it was nothing I could if I had to come back then I would have to repeat everything I did that last year times ten to, you know. It was perfect storm, man. Yeah. That era of Texas with Coach Barnes, like, man, that was yeah, we can go on and on yeah, all for day. Sure, all yeah, day. For sure. <laughs> But now nah, let's um so let's talk about you know okay you 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 get drafted obviously high we knew he was gonna be first second first or second pick mm -hmm. um you go to OKC what was that like you know finally reaching your dream of the NBA the your childhood dream reaching your your goal and um what was that like when you first stepped into the to the building man I, I've been thinking about this stuff obviously this whole year since I've been out and just think about that moment it was just. 
like I said, it's just it's the same trend as everything happened so fast because I got drafted, I was super excited, but soon I had to go to summer league and then I had to play for Team USA. So once I got to Team USA, it's full of mega stars. Mm -hmm. So it like took me right back down to a notch because you know, you're feeling yourself when you drafted, especially that high. And I'm and you know, you get that reality check so quick right. before all your other fellow rookies, you know, I'm with Kobe's, LeBron's, the Mellows, the CPs, practicing with these guys for a week straight before I play the NBA game. So it's like I went from being high to so low <laughs> because I'm at the I'm at the low bottom of the totem pole with those guys. So it just it just felt like, you know, it was such a learning experience. I was just taking in so much as I got drafted, like, you know, from meeting the GM to the, talking to the owner to flying to the city to having a press conference. Everything happened so fast. And, like, you know, I realized that everything starts over when you, when you step into that league, yeah. which you did in college. High school really didn't matter. So, I, you know, I knew that from day one from being a Team USA. Did they give you a tough time as, like, the new guy in the rookie? <laughs> uh, yeah, they definitely tried to, like, you know, hey, Rook, go grab my ice for me, go grab me a Gatorade. You know, that, that had definitely had they, you know, treated me like a Rook for sure. But, you know, after a few days, I made a few shots for them, you know. <laughs> uh, they respected my game and, you know, and they looked at me as a younger prospect that, you know, had some potential. So they they, they left me alone. But it was – it was a life-changing experience being around such greatness at an early early age before any one of my peers. And, you know, it's one of those experiences that still, you know, means a lot to me now. Yeah, DJ thinks rookies <coughs> get it easy these days. They, they it definitely easy. do. They got it easy. <laughs> they definitely do. Absolutely. <clears throat> why? I don't understand why that's changed. I mean, look at the oldest player on the team now. What is he, about 26, it's, like, on average? Yeah. Well, well DJ's the oldest one. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably the only guy in his 30s on the team. 32, and then it dropped to, like, 28, 28, 27. That's what I'm saying. So, when yeah. I came in, who was your vest when you came in? When I came in, I had Jason Richardson, Gerald Wallace, um, Raymond Felton, Sean May. I had a bunch of old dudes, old, like yeah, older guys, <laughs> dudes that was in college for four years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now yeah. you got guys in the league who've been in college for a year, and you know they in their ninth year at like 26, 27. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's just a younger, younger bunch. You know, it's different. It's different times right now. Do you think it's strange, almost how like young everyone is now in this league? When you look back now, as the older guys? Yeah, I don't think so. I, don't, I mean, <sighs> when you think about it, like I was 19 when I got drafted. Mm -hmm. Me too. You know, so um, that's pretty young. Yeah. And, and I was playing with guys that was, like Katie said, back then you had at least four guys that was in their 30s, you mm -hmm. know, with families and stuff. Yep. So yeah. I'm 19 and I'm playing with guys that's got kids, you know, yeah. and it was just like, man, what, how do I interact with this guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so now it's a lot different. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it ranged from 19 to 22, you know, 23 is the oldest, and then it jumped to 30 mm -hmm. maybe. What's yeah. it like to be on the opposite end of the spectrum now when uh, you think about it? To be the older it? guy? Yeah, to be on the opposite it's pretty, side. It's pretty cool because you, you got a lot of knowledge over the years and a lot of experience, and you see a lot of rookies come in with no experience and knowledge at all, and you just, you know, groom them and teach them as you see fit. And, you know, just see the – See the growth in you know your teammates is definitely fun. I started realizing that once I was probably what, eighth, ninth year in the league that I'm a vet now, mm -hmm. and you know what I do, I can give back to the younger players. So it's uh it's one of those things where you got to really take a take a you know a, a step back and realize that you're getting old, you're getting older. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you could you try to hold on for so long, but it's definitely cool to get that information back to the younger generation. Yeah, I got for sure. So we. Okay, so now you're in OKC. Mm -hmm. Y'all, it was an expansion team when you when you when you Basically, Seattle to OKC, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a fresh rebrand. Mm -hmm. Everything from jerseys to everything was new. Yeah. What was that like going from that to now? You guys are playing in the NBA, the conference finals yeah. against, you know, oh the NBA finals. Yeah. Once again, everything happened so quick for us. You know, we uh, we was we got the number two pick, number four pick and number three pick in three consecutive years, which got me, Russ, and James. And then, you know, we had a couple first round picks we brought Serge, Jeff Green, you know, so we had a we had a lot of young players and you know everybody developed pretty fast. And then, you know, we hit the playoffs that first year in twenty ten against the Lakers. Um after they uh, go they're going for a repeat 
and uh, we took them to six. And, you know, we had some momentum, and then we just kept building from there. So our first time in the playoffs, we were 21. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that experience right there just kind of catapulted us to another level. Yeah, I have to imagine you learned a lot about yourself being yeah. that young and having a young group of guys in that position. Most definitely. I mean, you're going up against champs. You know, Kobe, Powell, Ron Artest. You know, for me, I had to match up with Ron Artest, the best defender in the league at that point. And he, he really pushed me and got me better as a player, just trying to figure out different ways to attack him. And then you having a guard, Kobe Bryant, you know, on the other end, who was pretty much had every trick in the book. So at 21, and just like I said, it felt like a year before I was just in the dorm rooms with DJ, <laughs> and you know, and then I, you know, playing the playoffs. It's just like I said, everything happened so fast. But you gotta, you know, it, it made me adapt quicker. It made me adjust quicker, and, and, and learn things on the fly. And that's it's kind of the approach I take now as a player. I have to think, just because you guys were so young, do you think it's almost better for a younger player to get a taste of that, like the playoffs, to then want it more, or to just almost sit back and not have it and want it that way? I, I think, I mean, I, I prefer it to happen earlier. Um, you know, it's, I feel like you could reach your peak as a player a little earlier if you get more experience, because the pinnacle is being a champion and going through the playoffs mm -hmm. and that preparation that you got to go through in order for you to succeed in the playoffs individually and as a team. So the earlier, you know, the more seasons you get, we are we are like students, you know, and this is a it's a big class playing in the NBA, I guess, on basketball. So, you know, more experience you get earlier, the better. Yeah, I mean, like KD said, like the earlier, the better. I believe, you know, because um, I also I also believe that if you – because you, you can't pick where you get drafted. Sometimes mm -hmm. guys are drafted into bad situations, losing teams. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can get adjusted to losing and yeah. it becomes a part of you. And so you're okay with not making the playoffs yeah. and just going home in April and relaxing and chilling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because so, life is good. I mean, you're making yeah. millions of dollars yeah. and you play meaningless basketball and you get three months to chill and, and, and you know, yeah. just do your thing. So, yeah, you can definitely fall. Like you say, you could definitely fall into a losing habits, losing mentality. Yeah. And when you get that taste of the playoffs, it's, it's a totally different animal. You know, the intensity of the games, uh, the further you go, it's just it makes you want want to – get back there the next year, you mm -hmm. know, and it's just, it's an amazing feeling. So I think the earlier the better. Mm -hmm. Some guys never make it, no, some guys never play in the playoffs. No. Yeah, that's crazy to me. I had a couple teammates that never played, um, they may have had one playoff run in like their 12 year careers, like, you know, and that's, wow. and you know, that playoff atmosphere, like everybody who's watching basketball at that, that point, that level just raises from mm -hmm. the fans to the, players to everybody, commentators, everybody just gets better once the playoff gets, comes around. So, if you know, experiencing that, that's just a must as a player in the mm -hmm. league. What's the first memory you guys both have of being in NBA playoffs, realizing like, oh, this is way different than regular season? Game, obviously game one when we played in 2010 against the Lakers, uh, playing Staples Center is iconic. So, like, running out the Staples Center, you realize it. But, it, but that year it felt like every game in the Staples Center was a playoff atmosphere. But once we got back to OKC and we seen how loud our fans were when we when we stepped out on the court for warm-ups, it was just like, yo, yeah, I could tell the difference. You know, I'm like everybody's at their seat already standing loud with their T-shirts on 20 minutes before the game. Like the game started already and it was like, I want this feeling at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it was uh, Indiana. Um, we made it to the conference finals. Uh, we lost to LeBron and those guys with the Heat. That was seven but, game series, right? Yeah, we lost. We went all the way to seven with them. We we this close. Yeah, y'all almost finals. had that one. Uh, I still remember LeBron made that left hand layup on Paul George, and in Miami, that's what it gave because we was up. I think we was up one zero on them in game two. Oh, he had the lay. Yeah, yeah he, he did hit the driving layup. layup for the game. So if we'd have went up two zero on them going back to Indy. It could have been did different. Been. Did y'all win one in Indy? Oh yeah, we, we won one in Indy. Yeah, but that was that that was the most amazing time, you know, just the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's like you lock in differently for the playoffs than you do during the season. For sure, you know, you just and you watching other games, you watching who's playing after you or who's playing. You know, it's just a different feeling, um, and it's definitely something you want to taste every year. You know, you know, it's, it's like he said, you, everybody's not blessed to to make it. You know, some guys go their whole career without making it to the playoffs. So that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. So speaking of the playoffs, you have a great career in OKC. Mm -hmm. 
you decide to make a, a decision for yourself and, and go to the Warriors. Mm. What was it like actually going to the finals and winning a championship? Something that is that something that you thought you would ever do in your life, or something? You, I, I I mean, I always wanted the chance to compete for it. You know, um, I never expected to win a certain amount. But just to get that experience to play on that level, man, it was I was just grateful for it. You know, it was just the highest level of hoop, you mm-hmm. know, in the world. And since uh, I was in the rec center, I wanted that. Mm-hmm. You know, so to play against some of the greatest players to ever play and with some of the greatest players to ever play, uh, I felt like the game was at its highest peak. You know, both teams were at their best. You know, in that series, so I felt like it was it was just fun, man. I, it, it it was something that I didn't want to end. And, and you say fun, like, it, it's crazy because, like, watching you guys with, with that team, mm-hmm. you, Steph, Draymond, um, Clay, and, you know, you had some other great role players around you guys, but just watching y'all with so many talented uh, all-star players on mm-hmm. one team, y'all shared the ball. Yeah. Y'all were so unselfish with each other. It was actually fun to watch. And, you know, um, I really felt like every NBA team should should have took a page from that and just saw how, how much fun you guys were having how well y'all were playing mm-hmm. with all these great players on the same team. Because a lot of people said y'all wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of people said, you know, obviously when you got three 20-point scores on one team, you wonder, you wonder how the ball is going to move around. But I think our skills just complemented, complemented each other well. We had three knockdown shooters and myself, Steph and Clay, obviously. And then we had facilitators and Andre, Sean, Draymond that can move the ball, drive and kick. And we all just played off of each other well. And we switched everything on defense. That was the key for us. Mm-hmm. When we switched everything, we kind of took a lot of teams out of their movement on offense and kind of, you know, just made them think a little bit harder when we switched. So when we had we, we had that stuff in our back pocket, just different lineup switches. We were just a versatile team, man. Mm-hmm. And, and and we we did so much on both ends of the floor to complement each other. So it was, it was a fun time. Mm-hmm. What is it like? I know after you win – the NBA <laughs> Finals. You have <laughs> interviews left and right, and they're, t- yeah. they're like, they're like, what does it feel like? And it's hard for you to wrap your head around it. But what do you remember about like that day after, the week after, when you actually were finally able to sit and be like, wow, I actually did it. The, yeah, I sat in my, I sat in the house and just did the same things. I mean, I ain't never <laughs> it, it was just like a. You know, when you play, for me, when I play ball, I just feel like I'm creating an art piece. Like, you know, I do what I do and just leave it there and then come back to it. So, you know, I enjoyed the time off, you know, from a long season and, and stayed in the house and relaxed. That's really what it was, you know, and I was, and I had a big smile on my face as I kicked my feet up, you know, knowing that we was the last team standing. So, yeah, it was a great summer for sure. What do you do to relax? Watch a lot of TV, play a lot of Xbox, the same stuff I've been doing since I was at, <laughs> since we met at Texas, you know. Um, so that's all I used to do. You know, <laughs> hang, out with the, hang out with my friends, but, you know, everything revolves around the game. I'm going to throw DJ under the bus. He did say when we walked in here that he would beat you in any game. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he got kids. I don't you have know, any. I ain't touch a, I ain't touch a control in a while. Yeah, yeah, he's right. I got kids. He so got I, kids. I don't have, yeah. I, I'm a big he, kid right he now. He might so. get me right now. <laughs> <laughs> he might get me right now. But yeah, I mean, you know, obviously you had a great run with the Warriors. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you tore your Achilles. Mm-hmm. What was what was that moment like? Well, that time period like for you mentally and um, personally, like going through something like that, um, not knowing how you would bounce back from yeah. that in your future. Like, what, what was that like? I Man, it's still it's still a mystery. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I haven't played an NBA game since, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, but it was it was uh, it was scary for sure, you know. When you you know had the biggest injury injury in the sports almost, and you know, and you at that pinnacle of you know mm-hmm. when the final was playing in the champion for the championship, it was just like so many different emotions. Just like damn, it was, I was sad. I was just a little bit at peace because I knew that you know I put so much work in. I could just chill for a second, mm-hmm. like. You know, I was disappointed that, you know, I didn't get a chance to finish out the series. Like, it was just so much stuff that was uh, going through my mind. But, you know, I know I had the right support around me. I know so many people was going to lift me up and help me through this time. And at the end of the day, it was just basketball. So Mm -hmm. I I knew everything else outside of that was still going to keep going and keep flowing. And 
the hardest part was just to rehab and, and keep right. and keep trying to figure out how to get better and stronger. So, you know. During this time when you've had time to kind of reflect on everything that's happened, have you had any revelations, do you think, when you kind of look back? Uh, uh, not really. I mean, um, not really. I just – I'm just trying to take it a day at a time and enjoy where I am and, you know, keep, I don't know, keep, keep doing the stuff that I've been doing. I mean, I, f I felt like I was in a good place before I got injured mentally as far as how I wanted to approach being, a, being in this life, um, you know, from all aspects, you know, I feel like I really found who I was. So just keep going and, you know, keep leaning on the people that helped me get here to this point. And, Try not to change, make any drastic changes to what I do. So outside of basketball, like what what are some of the things that you you know I've, I've I mean we all see you doing a lot of ventures and uh, different things you're doing with business. Like mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you're passionate about right now that you got coming up? Yeah, that's a good. I mean we're producing a couple shows. We got this stuff on Marbury documentary that we're doing. Um, that I'm really excited about. We, we executive produce. I got a media company called. 35 Ventures, where we do, we got a show on ESPN, we got a show on Apple TV coming up here soon. So just producing content, telling stories around the game of basketball in my unique way. Uh, I'm investing in tech, you know, being out in the Bay Area really uh, put me, I rubbed some shoulders with some of the, you know, the most important people in the tech world when it comes to, you know, pushing the, our future forward. So just getting educated in different areas outside of the game is what I've been uh, been trying to do the last few years. Where did your interest in media come from? Because I know you were credentialed by the Players' Tribune, were you not? Yeah, yeah. For the uh, Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I took photos. <laughs> uh, I was on the sideline for that. I mean, I, I, like to, I like hearing and seeing authentic stories around the game that show – what these athletes are about on a deeper level than just, you know, what they produce out on the field. I like to get into their mind when they're doing some of this cool stuff, you know, what they're thinking about. Every athlete has a different story and a journey, and uh, and there's so many athletes out here that we can tell nonstop stories around. So, you know, um, just try to do my part and spread the gospel, I guess, you know, because there's so much good that comes out of team sports. And the camaraderie and togetherness that comes out of it, I want to tell that story. I love it. So this is my final question, bro. When you walk away from the game, <laughs> what kind of legacy are you trying to leave behind for your future kids and yeah. people looking up to you when you walk away and you hang it up? Uh, first off, I want everybody to know who I work with every single day, from the trainers to the ball boys, that I, was, I maximize every day. <clears throat> I came to work hard every day. I didn't leave any, anything on the table in practice or in shoot arounds or in, you know, post game, pre game, whatever. I just want everybody to know who's seen me every single day to know that I, I maximized every hour I was on the court. And I'm cool with that. Anything else is up for discussion. I know once you get to a certain level, then is not, nothing that you're going to do is ever be set in stone in mm -hmm. other people's eyes. It's always going to be opinions on what you did. So, but. I know um, <clears throat> my story be told by the people I work with. You know, they'll they'll tell the right story about me. Well, thank you, bro. Appreciate yeah. you for joining us. Of course, us. man. Yeah, thank you for your time. No doubt. I like Hospitality this. Hospitality, too, man. Thank you, bro. No doubt. Augustine for three. He thrills it. <laughs> DJ Augustine.